What's up, Meta Nerds? Today we'll be taking a deep dive into one of the most intimidating droids to march into battle, the Octoptara Combat Droid, as well as the variants of similar names. We'll break down the differences between these machines, how versatile they were for the Separatists, and of course, some interesting behind the scenes facts to wrap things up. Designed and manufactured by the Skakoans of the Techno Union, and named after the living creature, the Octoptara, back on their world of Skako, the Techno Union Army. <laughs> Count. This droid had two main variants that we need to address before moving forward with the breakdown. The standard size is known as the Combat Tri Droid, and the larger size, like the ones we see on Megiddo and Christophsis, are called the Magna Tri Droid. So to preempt any confusion, I'll address each of these droids by their combat or Magna distinction when going over their stats and history. With that out of the way, let's take a closer look at the Tri Droid, starting with the Combat variant. Standing at a height of 3.6 meters, or 11 feet 10 inches, the combat tri-droid was still a rather imposing foe to face, backing up the B1s and B2s. It's about a foot taller than your standard school bus, and just under the height of two clone troopers, who stand at an even 6 foot. However, it isn't made clear if this is the default height when its legs are in a crouched position, as seen in these images, or if that is the tallest it could get. Based on the brief scenes from the movie though, I'd wager my last credit that it's the former, with the combat tri-droid actually being capable of a slightly greater stature. This terrifying tripod was classified as a fourth degree droid, meaning it was built for military and security purposes, as opposed to say a certain R2 unit, who wasn't purely bred for battle, he just took a liking to it. The combat tri-droids had red sensors and were armed with three laser cannons, but there was yet another variant that added even more of a threat than these massive turrets. The ever cruel Skakoans filled the head of this droid with a plague virus during the Battle of Uba 4, which would be released into the air upon the droid's destruction, giving these horrors the nickname of the Virus Droid. During the Battle of Coruscant, we see these droids with another ordnance variation, not firing blaster bolts, but instead a single deadly beam, similar to that of Bactoid's homing spider droid. After firing any of these weapons, and this applies to the larger variant as well, the droid's bulbous cranium would rotate, allowing for a new forward-facing gun to unleash a volley at whatever poor soldiers were in this beast's warpath. This made the tri-droid very difficult to fight, as it had no true front or back, and all sides were defended at all times. We don't have any further information on this droid's speed, weight, or cost, all still corporate secrets of the Techno Union. What we do know, however, is that the smaller combat tri-droid was the first of many models they built, with the larger magna tri-droid following soon after. Sadly, that's about it for the little brother, so let's look to the towering magna in all its spindly glory. The Octoptara magna tri-droid was a behemoth, standing at a height of 14.59 meters, or 49 feet. That's 4 feet taller than the letters on the Hollywood sign, if it came here to liberate Earth. Now, although this model was the second of the two, from its use in the Clone Wars, it appears to be the more popular variant. Maybe it was the imposing size that sold the Seps on its 100,000 credit price tag, which is the cost of 2.5 Ultra Droids, or one-third the cost of an ATTE, while having a top speed of 50 km per hour, or 31 miles per hour about 10 kilometers per hour slower than the Republic's main walker. But the Magna can do something the ATTE never dreamed of. When it comes to firepower, it not only has the standard, albeit larger, laser cannon turrets, it can also be fitted with deadly, heavy ordnance launchers. One missile was enough to not only destroy a UTAT, but flip it over into the air several meters before the massive, heavy tank came crashing down. And it hurts to think what that kind of concussive force would do to a poor shiny who just transferred to the outer rim. The ammunition was stored in the head of the walker, with a total of 48 shells to dish out destruction. In theory, 48 major pieces of armor could be destroyed by a single magnet tri-droid, all for just 100,000 credits. Even though these three cannons were its only pure weapons, its size could also be used for attack. With massive claws on the ends of its long legs, and the sheer weight of the machine at work, allowed the magna to stomp and crush through enemies as well. This size did have its downsides though, for if small groups of well-trained infantry could get close enough, the walker did not have any sort of defense against this kind of attack. This weakness is demonstrated a few times by a certain chosen one in his Elite 501st, so it was best to use these massive mechs in tandem with other tanks and infantry to support it. But what if all is lost, armor is destroyed, and all of your battle droid support is cut to scrap by those pesky Jedi? Fear not, because the Magnetri droid has a few surprises left in him. First, and it is safe to assume the smaller model could do this as well, the droid could use its claws to climb sheer walls, like we see on Christophsis. 
Presumably you could do this to cliffs as well, or really just about any surface, making it a viable option for dramatic escapes or even very creative attacks. Stomping all over everything from subterranean bases to spaceports and floating cities like Bespin. But if climbing isn't your style, don't worry, the Skakoans have a plan B, as seen on yet another potential variant of the Tridroid. As we see during the daring escape of Echo on Skako Minor, the Techno Union implemented a new design for their famed Tridroid, that being a massive thruster that could propel this terror into the sky and fly in and out of combat. As if the Magna Tridroid wasn't scary enough, apparently they fly now. They fly now! <laughs> he forgot, he forgot. But what if that they, was the first time they used them? They're not using them since the Clone Wars. <laughs> Sorry, I had to. A self-propelled, computer-automated, mobile artillery unit capable of destroying heavy Republic tanks in a single shot, now soaring through the air. All I can say is luckily the Clone Wars was rigged, because the CIS had some very disturbing toys. With the stats and variants done, let's talk history. Like I said, the smaller combat droid was one of the first out of the factory, followed by the larger Magna. It isn't exactly known when in the timeline this variant came out, just that it was implemented into battle by Warm Loathsome in 22 BBY just months after the Battle of Geonosis. It was during the Battle of Christophsis that we see both the pros and cons of this walker, with it being able to deal out incredible amounts of damage on the battlefront, but is very susceptible to attacks from the more creative forces of the Republic. Here's where we saw the climbing abilities of this droid, with Asajj Ventress attempting to escape from the Jedi using a hidden tri-droid that was clung to the side of the building. This would not work in her favor, as she got caught monologuing instead of making her retreat, and Anakin, alongside Obi-Wan, leapt onto the stilt-like legs of this machine and cut through them. A major weakness when all of the generals of your enemy's army are wielding these devices that slice through legs like butter. And of course, it sent this titanic droid falling to the ground below. We don't see them pop up again for some time, with the next appearance coming during Anakin and Rex's rescue of the ARC Trooper Echo from the clutches of Wat Tambor and Skakor Minor. This flying variant is painted in crisp Techno Union colors and soaring along D1 aerial battle droids, which were the perfect complement, something that really would have helped out on Christophsis. But along with Clone Force 99, he was still able to take it down just like before. Although the clones and Jedi escape, we don't see another variant of the Tri Droid until the very end of the Clone War, though that doesn't mean they weren't used across the galaxy. We see these droids swarming the streets of Coruscant during the abduction of the Senate, these being the smaller combat ones, which are also seen taking on the 212th during the Battle of Utapau. The large Magna Tri-Droid is seen one last time during Order 66 on Megiddo, flipping that hover tank, right before Bakara and his marines got the call that took down Master Mundi. Following the rise of the Empire and the slaughter of the Separatist Council at the hands of Lord Vader, almost all Tri-Droids, Magna and combat alike, were deactivated and scrapped. I say almost, because the legends has it that many remained active on Uba 4 as planetary security. No further use of this droid was documented, as with many of the CIS war machines. Being controlled by a droid brain as opposed to a pilot, oftentimes made it more trouble than it was worth for the Alliance to restore them, if they could find any at all. And clearly Palpatine wanted to go in a different direction. An undignified end to such a cool piece of tech. That closes the holocron on the Octoptara Tri Droid, but let's look at some behind the scenes facts. Its first appearance was in Chapter 23 of the original Clone Wars show, and then of course in Revenge of the Sith, the Clone Wars, as well as some books and games like Republic Heroes. LEGO included the combat variant in its Utapau battle pack as cannon fodder for the clones, and Hasbro has also gotten in on the action with both the smaller variant, and more impressively, the large Magnetri droid from the Clone Wars, being a Walmart exclusive at the time. The Octoptara was designed by Ryan Church for Revenge of the Sith, and was one of the few vehicles seen throughout Star Wars media that has a plethora of color variants, at least five seen across different shows and films. If you want more, be sure to check out these resources, but that does it for the Octoptara Tritroid. Please hit that like button, share the video, leave a comment, and subscribe. Those are all the best ways to help me out. And check out one of these videos, I'm sure you'll like them. But most important of all, remember, if you start smelling that spicy air of a cracked Octoptara, tell your Batch brothers you love them, and the Force will be with you. Always.